cam's not very good on here, but it'll do. Come on. Hello, I think hopefully we are live. And um, just put, please put a comment if you can hear us. Hopefully you can. And the microphone should be switched on. Yeah, it's switched on. Um, sorry about that. We're just going through Facebook because YouTube's being weird and not working very well. So and we're trying to do that. Right. I'll start again in case some people didn't hear. Um, we were doing eight rounds. Uh, well, after every two rounds, we'll then mark the two rounds and then we'll move on to the next one. After round four, we'll stop for, for about a ten minute break and we we'll do some announcements. That gives you time to grab a drink or go to the toilet, anything you need to do just for a quick break. Um, this is the first time we've tried to do this, so fingers crossed it work. Normally we say something doesn't work. If you've ever been to our quiz before, it's Chris's fault. He's sitting here, so we'll just blame him. It's fine. Got a message coming through. Oh, time to go on Facebook. Yeah, I apologise if you're on YouTube. Try to look on YouTube. It didn't go very well, so I think it's just easier if we do it on here. Most people are on here anyway. Um, yeah, if you can hear me, just please make so, so, so we know. We have got some um, mummies keeping an eye on the comments. Just want to make sure everyone can hear. Should be able to. Yeah, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Happy start, yeah. Okay, so uh, first round, obviously, you can play by yourself or play against each other in your household or play as a team. Let's just okay. So we've got question one. These are all round one. It's going to be about alcohol. So I know several people who are watching this probably should know <laughs> questions about alcohol. Um, no, sorry, one second. Just tell them to go on for the tour Facebook and they can watch it on there. Right, so we've got question one. Is what fruit is baby sham made of? What fruit is baby sham made from? Oh, no, it's from. So just repeat that again. What fruit is baby sham made from? Question two, what flavour is the liqueur Cointreau? What flavour is the liqueur Cointreau? Oh yeah, just remember, please don't put the answers in the comments because obviously it's not fair on people. I will read out the answers and you can put what you think then. But while we're doing the questions, please don't put them in there so it doesn't spoil it for other people. I've got people watching, so they must. They're going even virtual. They're going even virtual on Facebook, and they've just got to wait for the video. Question to come three: out and Click on it. Which well-known brand of an alcoholic drink has a trademark symbol of a boar's head? Which well-known al brand of alcoholic drink has a trademark symbol of a boar's head? And just to remind us, if anyone's now just joined this question three. Question four. What name is given to the utensil used to stir alcoholic drinks, including cocktails? What name is given to the utensil used to stir alcoholic drinks, including cocktails? Just also because I know some people are on YouTube and coming over, I will, for the first round, I will read them out quickly again so you can hear question one, two or three if you've missed it, just to be fair on those people, once I've done up to number ten. Question five. How many millilitres of pure alcohol make up one alcohol unit? Is it A, five millilitres, B, 10 millilitres or C 25 millilitres so is it A 5 millilitres 
B, 10 millilitres, or C, 25 millilitres? How many millilitres of pure alcohol make up one alcohol unit? Question 6. Which country introduced Stella Artois Lager to the world? Which country introduced Stella Artois Lager to the world? Question 7. What is traditionally served on the rim of a glass of margarita? What is traditionally served on the rim of a glass of margarita? Question 8. Which has more calories? A pint of Guinness or a pint of Foster's? Which has more calories? A pint of Guinness or a pint of Foster's? Question 9. Is ale made from A. Malted wheat, B. Malted rye, or C. Malted barley? Is ale made from A. Malted wheat, B. Malted rye, or C. Malted barley? And finally, question 10. What is the volume of a standard bottle of wine? What is the volume of a standard bottle of wine? So that means how much does a bottle of wine hold, just to clarify that. I'm just going to repeat question one and two again for those who didn't get to hear it. So question one was, what fruit is baby sham made from? What fruit is baby sham made from? And question two was, what flavour is the liqueur Cointreau? What flavour is the liqueur Cointreau? Oh, someone's just asked me for question seven. And that question seven was, what is traditionally served on the rim of a glass of margarita? What is traditionally served on the rim of a glass of margarita? Does anyone else need any other questions repeated before we move on to round two? Just give you a sec. <laughs> So I do apologise again about YouTube, it's gone funny and it would took me a while to sort it out so it wasn't fair for people just to sit there waiting for ages. <laughs> but I will try and get that to work for Monday's bingo. Uh, what's that done? What's that done? Can move on. I'm going to move on to round two. No one else has put anything. No, do you, I said we do two rounds and then we do the answers. Oh, right, okay. So our second round is TV sitcoms. So question one. Who played the role of General Melchett in Black Adder Goes Forth? Who played the role of General Melchett in Black Adder Goes Forth?
Question two. What song was used as the theme tune for Absolutely Fabulous? What song was used as the theme tune for Absolutely Fabulous? Or Ab Fab, as some people know it by. Question three. Where in England does Gavin's family live in the sitcom Gavin and Stacey? Where in England does Gavin's family live in the sitcom Gavin and Stacey? Question four. Who starred as Inspector Raymond Fowler in The Thin Blue Line? Who starred as Inspector Raymond Fowler in The Thin Blue Line? But you know all the answers to these questions now, don't you? Yeah, I'm not telling anyone. <laughs> Question five. Which comedian starred in the 1980s series, sorry. Which comedian starred in the 1980s series, sorry. Question six. What was the name of Richard and Hyacinth's son in Keeping Up Appearances? What was the name of Richard and Hyacinth's son in Keeping Up Appearances? Question seven. What was the name of the character played by David Jason in Open All Hours? What was the name of the character played by David Jason in Open All Hours? His phone keeps going off. His phone keeps going off. <laughs> Question 8. What is the name of the ship's computer in Red Dwarf? What is the name of the ship's computer in Red Dwarf? Question 9. What are the names of Dave and Denise's children in the royal family? What are the names of Dave and Denise's children in the royal family? And finally, question 10. Who wrote and starred in the sitcom Dinner Ladies? Who wrote and starred in the sitcom Dinner Ladies? Okay, and that's the 10 questions for the round two. Uh, if you could just comment if you'd like me to repeat any before we uh, mark them. I'll just give you a couple, about a minute or so. Just in case anyone needs any repeated. And then we'll go back and we'll mark rounds one and two. I think you've got many of them, Ron? Yeah. All of them. Okay. No, I don't want them. Parents and technology doesn't mix, does it? Well, only the ones who are like you over six. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. Come on. Ah, there we go. There we go. 
question six, yeah? Um, what was the name of Richard and Hyacinth's son in Keeping Up Appearances? What was the name of Richard and Hyacinth's son in Keeping Up Appearances? And question 10. Who wrote and starred in the sitcom Dinner Ladies? Who wrote and starred in the sitcom Dinner Ladies? Just a reminder, please don't put the answers in the comments just because so it's fair on everyone. You know, happy to do that once we've the rounds, the answers have been revealed, but it's just so people can't moan about the um, answers being there and they're trying to work it out I know some other quizzes they've had problems with that who've tried to do it online so but I hope you're enjoying it so far question 10 please yeah I've done that one okay. <laughs> sorry he's a bit slow <laughs> he's like oh, on the I'll five minute it. delay from everyone else <laughs> If you know him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm joking. Okay. Oh, we love him, really. Okay. I'm going to do the answers now for round one and two. So, round one, which was alcohol. The quest first question was, what fruit is baby sham made from? It was pears. What flavour is the liqueur Cointreau? It's orange. Which well-known brand of alcoholic drink has a trademark symbol of a boar's head? It was Gordon's Gin. What is the name given to the utensil used to stir alcoholic drinks, including cocktails? It's a swizzle stick. How many millilitres of pure alcohol make up one alcoholic unit? It was, a, it was B, sorry, 10 millilitres. Question six, which country introduced Stella Artois Lager to the world? It was Belgium. Question seven, what is traditionally served on the rim of a glass of margarita? It's salt. Question eight, which has more calories, a pint of Guinness or a pint of Foster's? It was Guinness, Guinness has 12, 210 calories. So the answer was Foster's, which has 227 calories. So just... Yes. Guinness has 210 and Foster's has 227. So the answer was B, Foster's. Question nine. Is A made from, ale made from A, malted wheat, B, malted rye or C, malted barley? It was C, malted barley. And question 10. What is the volume of a standard bottle of wine? Oh, right, I see. Sorry, I thought she'd put that A, B, C. <laughs> it was uh, either, these are the different measurements. It, so you could either have 0 0.75 litres or 750 millilitres, which is, I think, what they normally put on a bottle anyway, or 75 cillilitres. So any of those units, you know, that's the, the difference of what they would be. So any unit you put would be fine. Uh, round two, which was TV sitcoms. Who played the role of General Melchett in Black Adder Goes Forth was Stephen Fry. What song was used as a theme tune for Absolutely Fabulous? It was Wheels on This Wheels on Fire. Question three. Where in England does Gavin's family live in the sitcom Gavin and Stacey? It was Bill and Ricky in Essex. Question four. Who starred as Inspector Raymond Fowler in the Thin Blue Line? It was Rowan Atkinson. Question five, which comedian starred in 1980's series Sorry? It was Ronnie Corbett. Question six, what was the name of Richard and Hyacinth's son in Keeping Up Appearances? It was Sheridan. Question seven, what was the name of the character played by David Jason in Open All Hours? It was Granville Arkwright. Question eight, what is the name of the ship's computer in Red Dwarf? It was Holly. And question nine, what are the names of Dave and Denise's children in the royal family? It was David and Norma, or if you put baby David, that's fine. 
Uh, question 10. Who wrote and starred in sitcom Dinner Ladies? It was Victoria Wood. So well done if you got, uh, you might have got 20 out of 20 for them or, you know, however you did. Just a bit of fun, it doesn't matter, but hopefully you enjoyed that. And we can move on to round three, which is musical duos. So I've just got to make sure I hope I pronounce all these names right. I'm sure you'll be telling me if I don't. <laughs> you go, no, Rebecca, it's this. <laughs> so question one. What were the first names of the Everly Brothers duo? What were the first names of the Everly Brothers duo? Or duo, I should say, sorry. Question two. Which duo had a number one hit in 1981 with Tainted Love. Which duo had a number one hit in 1981 with Tainted Love? Question three. Which single in 1967 became the first number one by a father and daughter duo? Which single in 1967 became the first number one by a father and daughter duo? Question four. I Got You Babe became a worldwide hit for which American duo? I Got You Babe became a worldwide hit for which American duo? Question five. Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe make up which pop duo? Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe make up which pop duo? Question six. Jason Donovan and Kylie Minogue had a number one in 1988 with which song? Jason Donovan and Kylie Minogue had a number one in 1988 with which song? That's our clock, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you can hear that cuckoo in. Question seven. Bridge over troubled water was the best-selling album of 1970 for which duo? Bridge Over Troubled Water was the best-selling album of 1970 for which duo? Question 8. Brian and Michael's song, Matchstick Men, and Matchstick Cats and Dogs was about which artist? Brian and Michael's song, Matchstick Men and Matchstick Cats and Dogs was about which artist? Did you know everyone can hear you? <laughs> this sounds like you cut I'm just not with a stand and knife through his finger again. Mm. Ouch. Uh, question nine. Which film featured Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren's song Up Where We Belong? Which film featured Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren's song Up Where We Belong? And question ten. 
Which other Philip teamed up with Phil Collins to record Easy Lover? Which other Philip teamed up with Phil Collins to record Easy Lover? Okay, so that's the 10 questions for the music duos. If you want to comment, if you'd like me to repeat any of them, in case you missed one, or just want me to make sure, if you need anything, you want me to spell it out as well, you can comment below and then I will try. <laughs> so I'm surprised I've managed to say half of these, let alone trying to spell <laughs> Yeah, I did English. <laughs> oh, number nine. Which film featured Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warne's song Up Where We Belong? Which film featured Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warne's song Up Where We Belong? <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. I'll go through. He wants one, three, seven, and nine. So I'll just do one, three, and seven. Question one was, what were the first names of the Everly Brothers duo? What were the first names of the Everly Brothers duo? And question three was, which single in 1967 became the first number one by a father and daughter duo? Which single in 1967 became the first number one by a father and daughter duo? And number seven was Bridge Over Troubled Water was the biggest selling album of 1970 for which duo? Bridge Over Troubled Water was the biggest selling album of 1970 for which duo? And number eight was Brian and Michael's song Matchstick Men and Matchstick Cats and Dogs was about which artist? It's not me, it's Kirsty. <laughs> uh, Brian and Michael's song, Matchstick Men and Matchstick Cats and Dogs, was about which artist? Just give everybody... No, it was number eight. One, three, seven, and nine. Yeah, repeat question eight. Oh, sorry. I don't... Oh! I don't know what I did there. I already repeated number nine. Um, which was which film featured Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren's song Up Where We Belong? Okay, so we'll move on to round four, which is winners in 2019. So these are all people who've won, uh, it's like a like a TV program or an award or something for last year. So not people who won this year, people who won last year to, in 2019. So, number one, the winner of Strictly Come Dancing. The winner of Strictly Come Dancing. And just to clarify, so that's like the winner of Strictly Come Dancing in 2019. You right? You finished cutting? <laughs> Question two. Winner of BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Winner of B the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Question three. Winner of the Best Actor Oscar. Winner of the Best Actor Oscar. Question four. Winner of the Football Champions League. Winner of the Football Champions League.
just to confirm, because I've just had a message that Kirsty was my cousin, Kirsty, not any other Kirsty. <laughs> just because I've had a message from someone else called Kirsty saying, sorry, I didn't mean to ruin anything. It wasn't you, it was my cousin. She doesn't ruin anything, though. Just to confirm that. <laughs> Question five. The winner of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. The winner of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Question six. Winning country of the Eurovision Song Contest. The winning country of the Eurovision Song Contest. Question seven. The winner of Britain's Got Talent. The winner of Britain's Got Talent. Question 8. Winner of the TV BAFTA for Best Drama Series. Winner of the TV BAFTA for Best Drama Series. Don't clip your teeth with the pen if I can hear it. Sorry. <laughs> Got you clicking one side and cutting the other. Ugh. Um, <laughs> um, question nine, the winner of Wimbledon. Winner of Wimbledon. It's the male winner. Male winner. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, just true. Yes, the male winner of Wimbledon. Because obviously there's three men's of singles. men's so singles. That's, winner of the yeah. Men's singles, yes. Yeah, the winner of the men's singles in Wimbledon. Just to confirm, that's the winner of the men's singles in Wimbledon. And finally, question 10. Winner of the FIFA Women's World Cup. Winner of the FIFA Women's World Cup. Just to confirm, so they're all, all questions are who won last year in 2019. Uh, Mm -hmm. sneeze. No, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you'd like any questions for Peter, just put them in the comments or anything spelt out. Hopefully you're all enjoying it. <laughs> so we've not done well. We do our normal quizzes, but obviously this is different, a bit different this time. Question four: Winner of the football champions league. Winner of the football champions league. Number eight. Winner of the TV BAFTA for Best Drama Series. Winner of the TV BAFTA for Best Drama Series. I drink. I don't know if I should have um, drunk this as lemonade, so I might be a bit. <laughs> Probably was not the best drink to have. I'm trying to do this, but. How are you joining in? How are you getting on? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> He's got them all right so far. Hopefully. You know about how clever he is. Okay, we'll do the answers then for the next two rounds. So either um, swap your sheets with other people 
Or if you're by yourself, as they um, have been saying, just pretend you're another person, marking it. You know, put on a silly voice, a different accent, just pretend you're another person, <laughs> marking the sheep. Um, so round three, which was musical duos. Question one was, what were the first names of the Everly Brothers duo? They were Don and Phil. Question two. Which duo had a number one hit in 1981 with Tainted Love? It was a soft sell. Question three. Which single in 1967 became the first number one by a father and daughter duo? It was Something Stupid by Frank and Nancy Sinatra. Are you going to sing us a bit? No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was expecting you to tell me what it was. Question four. I Got You Babe became the worldwide hit for which American duo? It was Sonny and Cher. I got you, babe. <laughs> Question five. Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe make up which pop duo? It was the Pet Shop Boys. Question six. Jason Donovan and Kylie Minogue had a number one in 1988 with which song? It was Especially For You. I don't know that one. You have to sing it. <laughs> Especially for you. Oh, it's like Kylie's in the room. <laughs> Question Which seven. Money. <laughs> Question seven. Bridge Over Troubled Water was the biggest selling album of 1970 for which duo? It was Simon and Garfunkel. Question eight. Brian and Michael's song, Matchstick Men, and, with, and Matchstick Cats and Dogs was about which artist? It was L.S. Lowry. Which we, well, before this happened, we had the film, didn't we, at the hall? So that's pretty good. Question nine. Which film featured Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren's song, Up Where We Belong? It was An Officer and a Gentleman. That's Richard Gere. Yeah. Yes. And question ten. Which other Philip teamed up with Phil Collins to record Easy Lover? It was Philip Bailey. Let's do the answers for round four. These were all the winners in 2019. So the winner of Strictly Come Dancing was Kelvin Fletcher. The winner of BBC Sports Personality of the Year was cricketer Ben Stokes. The winner of Best Actor Oscar was Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody. The winner of the Football Champions League was Liverpool. Winner of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here was the Jacqueline Josser, who was former EastEnders actress. Question six. The winning country of the Eurovision Song Contest was the Netherlands, which they'll obviously be holding that next year. Uh, the question seven, the winner of Britain's Got Talent was Colin Thackeray, the Chelsea pensioner. Question eight, the winner of TV BAFTA for Best Drama Series was Killing Eve. You say we start saying? Yes, it did, yeah. <laughs> At 6 a.m. as you were saying. <laughs> well, it was on Telly Sunday night. Oh, yes, series. yeah, it was yeah. on six from 6 a.m. on iPlay or whatever it was. <laughs> question nine, the winner of Wimbledon was Novak Djokovic. And question 10, the winner of the FIFA Women's World Cup was the USA. So that is our four rounds. I'm just going to give you a quick five minute break if you want to go to the loo, grab a drink. Um, anyone wants to post if they had any, if there's been any birthdays this week or any announcements, anything special happened this oh, week? Oh, birthday, yes, first birthday out this week. It was uh, my auntie's birthday today. How old was she today? 70? Yeah. Yeah, 70. <laughs> She's not going to like me saying that, probably. It is her 70th birthday today. So a big happy birthday to her. Um, what other birthdays have we had? Um, you've got one. I you? have, yeah, that's true. My birthday on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I forgot about birthday Scarlett's last birthday last week, yeah. If anyone else has had a birthday this week got one this week or any other thing special we can get out um just want to a few watching earlier it was on a different stream you missed up this bit but just a big thank you to um 
<laughs> quiet week, mostly staying. Yeah. Oh, Finley's, oh yes, Finley's birthday. Oh, Finley. Yeah, Finley's birthday on Saturday. His eighth birthday. Happy birthday to Finley. Uh, can we have some questions, Jay? Uh, Joe's birthday was Monday. Happy birthday oh, yeah. to Happy Joe. Birthday, he Joe. was 10. And to Nick's birthday was Friday. He's 47. Oh, thank you, Kerry. <laughs> uh, there might be some questions Jay hopefully will get. Yeah, probably, probably in the next one. Yeah, if next not, one. definitely round six. Uh, round seven, all you bingo lovers. I think you'll like the... Uh, not round seven, round eight. Is it round eight? Seven. Round seven, sorry. I changed. The bingo lovers are going to like that one. Um, sorry, as I was going to say, uh, you're just a big thank you to obviously anyone watching or any, all around the country and um, everything who are working for the NHS out there every day, you know, helping all those poor people who are suffering with this awful virus or just as in hospital in general, you know, they work so hard and we really appreciate all the work they're doing, you know, saving lives every day. They are truly the real heroes. Anyone who works in any hospital or any care sort of way around the world is a hero. And also to all the people driving the lorries, working in supermarkets. If you are a key worker and you are still currently working to help keep this country afloat, we want to say, Matt, from Reading Village Hall and Reading Community Association, we just want to say a huge, massive thank you to you for helping keeping this country afloat. Oh, Melanie Brace, your birthday is next month, lol. Happy birthday for next <laughs> month. <laughs> say congratulations because Melanie got married and she had to cancel her wedding didn't she wedding yes reception. yeah uh, birthday, November 27th. <laughs> <laughs> not just anyone's birthday I could be here all night if we went through everybody's yeah. birthday but happy birthday to anyone who's celebrating this week or who celebrated while we in lockdown I know it's probably not been a great as great a birthday as you'd have liked but just make the main thing is you're keeping safe which is important Oh, yes. Um, Melanie as well. Yes, for getting married. Congratulations. Obviously, I know you wanted to celebrate. Unfortunately, with this going on, you couldn't. But we're all looking forward to celebrating you when this is over. Um, I feel like there was something else I was meant to say, and I can't remember what it was. Bingo. Oh, yes, bingo. I'll just say it now, but I will mention it at the end. Join us, hopefully, on YouTube and Facebook for live bingo next Monday. We do have our usual bingo caller. He will be calling the numbers. Which um, with tech involved, so we're just gonna go. But hopefully it'll be all right. <laughs> but we will have the screen so people. Can yes, see we the will number. have. Um, we're gonna bring all the bingo equipment here so you can see the numbers, how we would do up the hall, um, and you can randomly. There is a link in the in that event for you to randomly generate your card for each game we play. Happy Christmas, everyone! <laughs> Yes, just to, to get bingo um, bingo cards, yes, you can um, download them from the link in there. I will put in a screenshot of what the numbers you have to put in to get the correct card. Um, I'll put that in the Facebook event as well, and I'll put it in the comments when we do the YouTube for that so people can see that. Right, I think if we move on to round five, if everyone's got a drink and you're all, all refreshed again, I've got my drink here. Round five is going to be film villains and which film did they appear in? So I'm going to tell you a villain and you need to write, or if you're just saying it out loud, um, write down the what film they were in. Okay, there might be a couple which I might spell out, just I've been told to spell them. <laughs> so number one is Nurse, is it Ratched? Ratched. Just to confirm. Nurse Ratched, and that's R A T. C H E D, Nurse Ratched, and you put down what the film she was in is. Just to confirm, some of these are in more than one. So if you want to write down these blah 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 series, you know, like I don't think we've got one. So like, if it was like Darth Vader, you could write Star Wars series. Um, that's not one of the answers. Don't worry. <laughs> Question two, Agent Smith. Agent Smith. Question three. Norman Bates. Norman Bates. Q 
Question four. This one Jay should know. Question four. Scar. Scar. Question five. Lord Voldemort. Lord Voldemort. Question six. Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. Where is that barman Chris been standing here ages? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, he'll be with you Monday night calling the numbers, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Question seven. Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. Question eight. Michael Myers. Michael Myers. Question nine, Alex Forrest, Alex Forrest. And question 10, Annie Wilkes, Annie Wilkes. So I just I am going to just repeat them all because only short. So number one was Nurse Ratched. Number two is Agent Smith. Number three, Norman Bates. Number four, Scar. Number five, Lord Voldemort. Number six, Freddy Krueger. Number seven, Hans Gruber. Number eight, Michael Myers. Number nine, Alex Forrest. And number ten, Annie Wilkes. like just before if you want any repeated just put in the comments and i'll repeat them all spell any out if you'd like anyone spelled out i think you're thinking of the quiz at christmas don't you mm. yeah I've got 22 watching at the moment. Yeah, I do apologise again about YouTube. Hopefully we'll definitely try and get that um, running up for Monday night for bingo, definitely. I'm going to move on to round six then. So round six is famous dogs. And that is actually dogs, not women who <laughs> look like dogs. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I'm only joking. No, uh, famous dogs, as in the animal, that appear in books, films, or TV shows. So that's in books, films, or TV shows. So number one is Santa's Little Helper. Santa's Little Helper. Yeah, so you need to write down what they appear what program or book or or um, film they're from. Question two, bullseye, bullseye. Are you trying to have to set up bullseye? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> question three, Timmy, Timmy. Question four, spotty dog, spotty dog. Question five, Toto, Toto. Uh, question six, there is technically two for this, so you can put either one if you want, it's fine. It's K9. K9.
Question seven. Well out. Well out. Question eight. Bouncer. Bouncer. In question nine, Eddie, Eddie. And question ten, Snowy, Snowy. And no Kirsty, not as in Nanny's dog. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the 10 famous dogs. I will just repeat them again. So number one was Santa's Little Helper. Number two is Bullseye. Number three is Timmy. Number four is Spotty Dog. Number five is Toto. Number six is K9. Like I said, there is two technically for that one. Number seven is Wellard. Number eight is Bouncer. Number nine is Eddie. And number 10 is Snowy. So they're all famous dogs from either been in books, films or TV. You just have to put down the answer what one they're from. Also, if you'd like any questions repeated from either round five or round six before we do the answers. If not, either swap your answer sheet with someone else or, like I said, just pretend you're a different person and mark your own. Put a dress on, yeah. There you are. You can put, put a dress on and pretend you're someone else and mark your own sheet. <laughs> so hopefully we're all happy for... And I'll do the answers now. So back the answers for round... Five, yep. Yeah. What were film villains? So number one, Nurse Ratched was from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Number two, Agent Smith was from the Matrix series. Number three, Norman Bates was from Psycho, or if you put Bates Motel, that's fine as well. Number four was Scar was from The Lion King. Number five, Lord Voldemort was from the Harry Potter series. Number six, Freddy Krueger, was from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Number seven, Hans Gruber, was from Die Hard. Number eight, Michael Myers, was from the Halloween series. <laughs> Number nine, Alex Forrest, was from Fatal Attraction. Long, funny ball, I wasn't. Yeah. And number ten, Ali Wil Annie Wilkes, was from Misery. And that's why we said if you plan on your own, then you just pretend to be another person. <laughs> <laughs> and now we do just do the answers for round six, which were our famous dogs. So number one, Santa's Little Helper was from The Simpsons. Number two, Bullseye is from Oliver Twist, or Oliver, if some people Oliver is fine. Number three, Timmy is from The Famous Five. Uh, number four, Spotty Dog was from the Wooden Tops. Number five, Toto was from the Wizard of Oz. Uh, number six, K9 was from Doctor Who or the Sarah Jane Adventures. Number seven, Wellard was from EastEnders. Number eight, Bouncer was from Neighbours. Number nine, Eddie was from Frasier. And number ten, Snowy is from Tintin. Okay, we just got the final two rounds left to do. 
So round seven is for all you bingo lovers out there. Should be some you know. Um, there isn't any of, uh, unfortunately, any of Donna's knobbly knees. So all, all them trombones. All them trombones, no. <laughs> so not any of our famous ones. But <laughs> there should be some that you'll recognise if you come to bingo and some different ones as well. Might be some to give you some inspiration to throw in when we get back to normal again. <laughs> so i'm going to read out um so like i said if it was just for example if it was i would read all those trombones and you would write down 76 because that would be the number what is associated with the saying like you know one little duck would mean number two so you would just write down number two <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? I feel Donna's put. <laughs> I think you don't know what she meant about her. No, that's just something Dad says, you know. Bingo. Um, so, yeah, just to confirm again, say if I said for the saying, I'd say number one, I would say all those trombones, you would write down the answer 76, because that's what you would say. Normally in a bingo call, you say all those trombones, 76. And... Where's my knees? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, your nobly knees are at home tonight. They'll hope they'll be back again when we get back to normal. <laughs> so number one is two little ducks. Two little ducks. Number two. Clickety click. Clickety click. <laughs> Number three. Key of the door. Key of the door. Question four, Kelly's eye, Kelly's eye. Question five, top of the shop, top of the shop. Question six, unlucky for some, unlucky for some. Question seven, two fat ladies, two fat ladies. Question eight, Boris's den, Boris's den. It's not that boring, he didn't fall asleep yet. <laughs> Number nine, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. And number 10, Heinz Varieties. Heinz Varieties. Okay, so I'll just repeat all them for you. So number one was two little ducks. Number two, clickety click. Number three, the door. Number four, Kelly's eye. Number five, Top of the shop. Number six, 
unlucky for some. Number seven, two, two fatties. Number eight, Boris's Den. Number nine, Valentine's Day. And number ten, Heinz Varieties. Oh, and Jenny's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Megan was on there, so she should be. So if you'd like any of them repeated, just let me know. Now I have some answers to mark. <laughs> and we'll move on to round eight. Hope to explain this okay. So the it's one of the it's the answers is one to ten. So I just one minute. So all of these have all got different answers between yeah, 1 and 10. Different numbers, but between 1 and 10. None, none of them, none none of them, of them repeat. repeat. Right. So there'll be 10 questions. And out of the 10 questions, the answer will either be between 1 and 10. But one obviously, one. say if you answer, say, question 6 on number 1, you know the rest of the questions, the answers can't be number 6. So you only use each number once out of the 10 questions. So I'm just trying to think of a question. Um... How many horses in the apoc po horses of the apocalypse? Four. Four. So if you had horsemen. right now horsemen of the apocalypse, even <laughs> well, there was four horses as well. Yeah, horses. Um, you'd write down number four. You know the rest of the questions; they can't be number four. So obviously, you know later on you had a question and you knew that answer. Oh, that is number four. You obviously knew that answer you put before wouldn't be right. Um, hopefully that explains it. I apologise if people still don't have a clue. But you'll get it as we go along. I think you'll understand what I mean. Yeah. So the answers so. are all numbers. But yes. Numbers from one to ten. Yeah, yeah, all numbers from one to ten, but you can only use the number once. Each number once for one yeah. out. One for out, one out. Be... Yeah, for the questions. Yeah. So number one, how many players are there in a netball team? How many players are there in a netball team? Question two, how many years did Tony Blair serve as Prime Minister? How many years did Tony Blair serve as Prime Minister? Question three, how many Olympic gold medals did Kelly Holmes win in her running career? How many Olympic gold medals did Kelly Holmes win in her running career? Question four, how many feet are in a fathom? How many feet are in a fathom? Question five, what number lies directly opposite number three on a standard die? What number lies directly opposite number three on a standard die? Question six. How many Oscars has Meryl Streep won? How many Oscars has Meryl Streep won? That's okay. Just put Meryl Streep and I was a bit like, I'm sure it's Streep. <laughs> <laughs> Question seven. How much is the letter K worth in a game of Scrabble? How much is the letter K worth in a game of Scrabble? Question 
Question 8. How many children did Queen Victoria have? How many children did Queen Victoria have? Question 9. How many terms did Jimmy Carter serve as American president? How many terms did Jimmy Carter serve as American president? And question 10. How many great-grandchildren does the Queen have? How many great-grandchildren does the Queen have? And that's the 10 questions, so you should have a different um, different number for each question, <laughs> hopefully. If, it <laughs> if it's worked properly, you should do, anyway. They should all be between, between 1 and 10, so... If you'd like any of them repeated please let me know um, that is our final round so we will mark them too and just to remind you again we've got live bingo hopefully that will work properly on youtube and facebook on monday you can join in um dad will be saying the numbers if he keeps awake if he keeps awake yeah that's true he might fall asleep half past seven they go, I've reminded him of the time, so he should be there. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed tonight. We will, um, Hopefully we can do it again. I'll make sure I can read the questions properly. I think I might have to do it on an iPad, so I didn't get all this paper flicking, because I think it might be a bit loud. <laughs> so just to give you all a minute, if anyone needs any repeated, please let me know. people watching at the moment three and four so number three was how many olympic gold medals did kelly holmes win in her running career how many olympic gold medals did kelly holmes win in her running career and question four how many feet are in a fathom how many feet are in a fathom Sea, isn't it? Fathoms. Yeah, yeah, fathoms so below. Yeah, so you measure the depth of water, isn't it? Mm. Fathoms, yeah. Don't get me a brick sundown next week. <laughs> what from sitting in the garden? <laughs> I'm still pairs anything. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else like any questions repeated? Okay, we'll do the answers then for the final two rounds. So round seven which was bingo calls see i have to remember <laughs> so number one two little ducks 22. Right, right. number two clickety click 66. number three key of the door 21. Number four, Kelly's Eye, number one. Number five, Top of the Shop, 90. Number six, Unlucky for Some, 13. Number seven, Two Fat Ladies, 88. 
<laughs> and number eight, Boris's den is the number ten. He's the only one we've ever had um, a boo for, haven't we? When yeah. it was said. <laughs> number nine, Valentine's Day, fourteen. And number ten, Heinz Varieties, fifty-seven. So hopefully all you bingo, pinned to bingo, should have got quite a few of them right. So you might be able to add some of them in for Monday, maybe. And round eight, which was the answers is one to ten. So hopefully that made sense and you all got a different answer for each question. So number one was how many players are in a netball team? It was seven. How many years did Tony serve Prime Minister? It was 10. <laughs> Number three, how many Olympic gold medals did Kelly Holmes win in her running career? It was two. How many feet are in a fathom? It's six. What is directly opposite the number three on a standard die? It was four. And each side always adds to seven. Does it? Yeah. Each puts the sides on the die. Oh, yeah. So add up to seven. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. one and six, two and five, three and four. Yeah. Um, number six. Who? How many best... Act, sorry, how many actress Oscars has Meryl Streep won? It was three. Two best actress and one supporting. Number seven, how much is the letter K worth in a game of Scrabble? It's five. How many children did Queen Victoria have? Was nine. And how many terms did Jimmy Carter serve as American president? It was one. And how many great-grandchildren does the Queen have? Is eight. Can you name them? Um, Charlotte, George. Louis. Louis, Archie, is that Mia? <laughs> um, Savannah, I think is one. No, I um, no, that's it. She's got A anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might not know the names, but we know she's got A. Um, so that is the end of our quiz. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a comment below if you've enjoyed it. If you'd like let us to know how many, they yes, got. let us know in the comments how many you scored if you were playing in teams or by yourself. Um, out of eighty. Yes, that's right. Ten, ten <laughs> rounds of eight is eight. So I can do some maths. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you really enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like us perhaps maybe to do another one, please comment below or put in the comments of this video, and we will try and see if we can do another one for you. Um, maybe the next couple of weeks please if you want to come join us for live bingo on monday um that will be from hubba seven hopefully on youtube and facebook so everyone can join in we do apologize again working tonight i will make sure it's definitely working for monday um yes live live bingo or chris will be calling the numbers as per usual um we will have the bingo machine so you can see it you download your card from the link, which is if you go in that if you go in the event in the description, there's a link to download the card and the numbers you need to to make the card the right size. So it's the like normal size what we play with. We'll do the usual ten games. Obviously, there won't be any snowball jackpot or anything like that. We'll, we'll do ten games. Um, have a bit <laughs> to close our family effort. <laughs> I'm sure you did fine. <laughs> You come from my family, so we know why it would be that great. <laughs> no, no, let's see the scores people have put. A lot of people have done. Oh, David is a brain box. Please do again. Do Xmas round just for me. Well, perhaps we can do. We'll do as we couldn't celebrate Easter. Perhaps we can do one on Christmas or something. Or if there's any idea, if you've got any ideas of any rounds you'd quite like, comments as well. Chocolate. Yeah. So we can um, suggestions we can add to the future. We hope you've all enjoyed it. And um, yes, like I say, unfortunately from the virtual, we can't do any actual events. So we're trying to do as much as we can online so to give you entertainment, something to do while we're all in isolation. We hope you're all keeping well and keeping safe and all the families and friends you've got around the world. 
Um, yeah, we've got relatives. In yeah, I think it's friends watching. Hopefully, <laughs> um, hopefully we're all keeping safe over there. Um, like I say, and hopefully you'll be Sunday for bingo. Um, like I say, if you want to put any suggestions for any round this is in the comments, welcome to. We'll try and do a bit more of a selection so that everyone perhaps do some more sort of children rounds. I know there's a few kids playing today, which was more than I realised, so if we can perhaps do some more so they can join in as well. Um, there's lots of other, if you like quizzes, there's lots of different ones about, lots of online ones. Um, on YouTube, there's the gen, I can't remember his name, I think it's just Jamie. Is it Jamie? I can't remember. Um, he does a virtual <laughs> quiz, which he to the um NHS rtnhs enough. school like down the road we've got bells ringing and people knocking on pots and pans and all sorts um he does that as well plot does different specialist rounds if you're a big quiz head i want to join oh, wales hello people from wales yes please do if you come <laughs> as well where you're from um we'd love to sort of see those different people it's been good i mean i hope you've really enjoyed it and we hope you come and join us on Monday and then hopefully we'll let you know when we're going to do our next quiz. Hope if you can do some more questions for yeah. us, we can do that. And hope you all keep safe. And we will see you again Monday on YouTube and Facebook for live bingo. If you do get stuck on what to do with the cards, please do uh, read the tour Facebook so we can give you a hand to make sure you can do it and join in with us. Um, that's it, and we'll see you Monday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.